What would the um, Alamo and the Gateway Arch and the Liberty Memorial and Errol Rock all have in common? They're all the same thing. Oh, well, that might no. be. I'm not right on that. Well, no, not necessarily that. No, 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 something else. Something else. Well, they are all in the same category because not only are they um, historic, they are also in the category of being a national historic landmark. And in our country, there's sort of a, through the Department of Interior and through the National Park Service, there's sort of a um, pyramid of historic properties in our country that are sort of registered and known. And at the base of that, you may have heard of people talk about a property that's on the National Register of Historic Places. That's the very basic level of where our country recognizes a piece of property, whether privately or publicly owned, that is uh, important that should be saved. Um, there are about 90,000 of those all around our country. And around here would be places like uh, Prairie Park out at Arrow Rock, the Blosser Home, uh, the Buckner House. Those kinds of properties are listed on that. Then you go up to the next level. About 3% of those rise up to the next level of being a National Historic Landmark because they have significance on a national level. There's about 2,500 of those. And that's where the Alamo, um, the, Liber the White House, Liberty Memorial, and Arrow Rock comes in. So then the obvious question might be, so what is so significant about Arrow Rock that out of 90,000 out here, it could go up to the 2,500? Uh, oh, and then also beyond that, you have the monuments, about 170 monuments or so in about 50 or 60 uh, parks. So that's kind of the pyramid of historic things. But, but you're back to, to Arrow Rock. What is it then that would make it be a, a rise above many of the others? And I don't think anyone ever um, expressed it any more eloquently than Gene Hamilton did. And I know uh, some of you around here remember Gene from the time, one of the beginning founders back in uh, when the Friends of Arrow Rock was founded in 1959, a wonderful historian, and really one of the people responsible for Arrow Rock becoming a national landmark, and that was 50 years ago. And she wrote the first and still very well-known little booklet about Arrow Rock called Where Wheels Started West. And I think she says very well why Arrow Rock has national significance. Uh, Arrow Rock was known by the great and the near great, the adventuresome, the stout-hearted, and the visionary of the 19th century. Um, even before the town existed, the site was known and recognized as important. The French cartographers recorded it in 1723. Lewis and Clark going up the river in 1804 commented on it. General Clark with his dragoons on the way to build Fort Osage stopped on his way and said this would be an excellent location for a fort and a handsome spot for a town. George Sibley came to establish a trading post for the Osage Indians and wait out the War of 1812. Here in Arrow Rock in 1811 was established a ferry across the Missouri River that remained in operation for 116 years. From here in the morning of September 1st, 1821, after crossing the river at, from Franklin the night before, was William Becknell who started on what became the first successful trading venture to Santa Fe. Here in a compact frontier area over a 60 year span lived more men important in local, state, and national affairs and development than in any one place except possibly Tidewater, Virginia. Here lived Dr. some of these people. Dr. John Sappington, pioneer physician, farmer, philanthropist, who discovered the effectiveness of quinine in treating malaria. Here lived the Marmadukes, father and son, both governors of Missouri, planters, traders, politicians. Here lived Joseph Houston, tavern builder, merchant, founder of a financial dynasty that's still here today. 
Here lived General, near here lived General Thomas A. Smith of 1812 fame, who established his prairie farm experiment, which became one of the showplaces of the state and proved to the world that the treeless prairie could be successfully cultivated. Here lived Claiborne Fox Jackson, Missouri wartime governor, who died a victim to his services in the cause of the Confederacy. Near here lived John Lark Hardiman, student and inventive farmer who developed a hemp cutting machine said to be the forerunner of the McCormick Reaper. And here lived George Caleb Bingham, famous artist. And here he found the subjects as well as the subject for his historical paintings that so graphically described life in the mid 19th century. A list in the litany of the people and the things that Arrow Rock is known for nationally. The short answer would be the westward expansion of the Santa Fe Trail. And also, we have not just one uh, designation as a landmark, but we have two because the home of artist George Caleb B. <coughs> is also listed separately. Uh, there will be a major exhibit. It's going on actually right now in the Dallas area. Someone was said they were going there at Chris Christmas time. The Eamon Carter Museum of American Art has a major exhibit of George Caleb book of George Caleb Bingham's works going on right now with uh, paintings that are brought together from around the country. It's going to be at the St. Louis Art Museum uh, in starting in uh, February till May, and then it goes from there to the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. And the Friends of Arrow Rock are very honored to be working on a full-length documentary on the life of George Caleb Bingham uh, that we hope to have ready in, uh, and be out on uh, PBS and stations like that in the next couple of years. National prominence and significance from people like that. Uh, we've gotten a lot of publicity very recently. Maybe some of you saw Errol Rock in the Lyceum Theater on the front page of the Kansas City Star the other day. Uh, some of you I know have already seen The Christmas Carol or will go to see that. That's been a major um, undertaking of the Lyceum Theater. And the Lyceum uh, gives us uh, a lot of publicity to the village. Um, and also a wonderful shops and restaurants that are there. In the little town of Arrow Rock, and right now there are about 45 of us that live there full time, and we have about another 45 or so people that live in Arrow Rock uh, that we call our weekend people. They are people that have second homes, a lot of them in the Kansas City areas, and the other folks that live nearby, about 100 or so people that live in the village. Obviously, we don't carry on all the work that goes on in the village. Um, we have the Friends of Arrow Rock, which is an organization that I've worked for. Uh, uh, Friends of Arrow Rock is 55 years old, and um, I would have been there 30 years, so I can't be part of the very beginning of it here. But uh, we just published a, a book about our 55 years of history. So in the village, we have a nonprofit like the Friends of Arrow Rock. We have the Lyceum Theater, which is its separate nonprofit organization. We have the State Historic Site, uh, which is one, um, actually one of the very early State Historic Sites. Uh, the Houston Tavern that a lot of you have eaten in a number of times was the very first building in the State Park system that was restored going back to the 1920s. Uh, we have an elected town government. Uh, we have a group of people who do our marketing, join together to do our marketing. We have individual <coughs> merchants. So for a little town of uh, where the population says 40, 50 people out there, we do have a number of organizations and structures that keep us going. And we appreciate um, all of your help and support in all and any of those um, Groups. So if you're a attender at the Lyceum, or you're a backer for the Lyceum, or you're a member of the Friends of Arrow Rock, all of those things are really important to keep that little village going. And, um, and it's right here. It's, uh, it's our village, and it's here in our county, in our part of the state, uh, providing really significant history to all of those folks. Just know that the very best thing you can do for a little village like Arrow Rock, um, you know, we 
we know so many of the small towns around and, and other historic places that have been lost. And it's really wonderful that Arrow Rock has had the different groups and the different people through the years to be saved and to be representative of so many other communities as well as the special community that it is. So I thank you very much for because all of your attendance every time you come and do something there and enjoy it there is a way that, that just preserves that um, for the future. And as I tell the kids when they come and tour in our spring program, you know, we all have, we all have roots, just like those trees out there. And they don't grow out of our feet and to the ground, but we're, they're certainly there. And we are the people that we are. We think the way we think, we uh, look the way we look, all because of our past and our, our people. And if we know our past, we're going to understand ourselves a lot better. And if we know the roots of other people around us and in our world, we're going to understand them a lot better. And from that understanding and unlocking all of that that history can bring to us is certainly what's going to help us have a, a very good life today and a very promising future. So thanks for all that you do to help support that.